right, it's our second update of the summer. Last time it was very exciting because I was on day two of the Millionaire Maker, Jonathan, but I, you know, I got like 554th. It's not bad. It was like partway through day two. It was like, you know, more than double the money. That's pretty good, right? Whatever. It's been a week, so a lot has happened since then, including the double stack, which neither of us are still in. But <laughs> guess what? There is good news. Jonathan did quite well in an Aria daily. Let's get to that. So yeah, the Aria Daily from a few days ago, I did really well. I was in a five-way chop for about $12,000 each. It's paid for my double stack because we yes. swapped. That's right. Yeah. He got some money for Two it. Two bullets all he's, paid for. He's very happy yeah. about that. Yes, I know. It's <laughs> great. Um, probably the coolest hand from this event for me anyway uh, was we were two off the bubble and I had just gotten moved to a new table. I left my old table, I was the chip leader, but the new table, there was a guy with 350,000 in chips. I had about a quarter million. Everyone else at the, this new table was like under 100K or around 100K. And uh, we were at uh, 2,000, 4,000 blinds. And the, this huge chip leader was in middle position and he raised to 8,000. Uh, sorry, it was 3, 6, 2, 4 blinds, who cares? He raised to 8,000. Uh, I defended the big blind with A7 of clubs. And the flop comes out king, 10, four with two clubs. This is a very good flop for me, obviously. Kind of scary when you're this deep though, right? Yes, you gotta be a little careful normally when you're this deep, especially when we're close to the bubble. I check, not surprisingly. He bets 10,000 and I think to myself, you know what, how am I gonna play this flush draw? This guy doesn't know anything about me. He doesn't know if I'm aggressive or not. This is a great time to raise. So I raised to 26,000 and uh, he thinks just for a little bit and calls pretty comfortably, I would say. The turn is the six of hearts, which helps neither of us almost certainly. Maybe he made a set, John. I mean, anything's possible. Probably but not. It's unlikely he's heroing there with sixes when we're the two deep stacks. Uh, I decide I can't just check raise and give up, especially with a hand this good with this much equity. So I decide to bet a lot to try and get him to fold. So I bet 56,000. He thinks for like two minutes and calls, and honestly, he looks pretty comfortable again. That sucks. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's really. <laughs> willing to fold. So I'm really hoping for a club on the river. I decide if an ace comes, I'm just gonna check. And uh, that doesn't happen. The queen of hearts comes instead. So I just have ace high. And I'm thinking about what to do. And as I do that, the floor man yells for all the dealers to stop what they're doing. We're going hand for hand. So we're on the stone bubble right now. And I think this is kind of a perfect time. So I go all in for 153,000. And he tanks for about three minutes and folds. That's called a high variance play that is very high variance, but it's a cool way to use the bubble. Hey, speaking of that Aria tournament that Jonathan paid me out on, that was pretty sweet because I did not cash in that tournament because of this incident that occurred. I'd actually like to know your guys' thoughts because it's a weird spot for me where a new player moves to the table at the 5K big blind. I have 190K in front of me, so almost 40 bigs. I've been cruising, I feel like the field is really soft. I'm playing well. This new player has 450K, so it seems like he's accumulated a lot of chips. I don't know how, but often that means hyperaggression or he got really lucky a bunch of times. It's hard to know because he just moved to the table, which is the part that really sucks for me in this hand, where he opens the hijack, and on the button, I decided just to flat with ace-queen off because of kind of a weird stack size. I know I could three bet here. What do you think? Is that better? Um, I think both are fine, honestly. Yeah. If it's, especially if he's a new player, it's yeah. fine on the button, especially the flat. I mean, yeah, I'm kind I of like concerned. three betting a lot, but. I'm kind of concerned when he's a guy who has this gigantic stack, he's the type of guy who's just gonna, if he gets three bet, just put the stack in and be like, you deal with it, buddy. Yeah. So I didn't want to be in that spot. I just flat, flop comes out, it's heads up, and flop comes out, ace, jack, four, rainbow. He see bets 20K having made it 13K pre, which is pretty big. Now, I don't know anything about this guy, which really kind of sucks, but I have to call with ace-queen, obviously. The turn is another offsuit card, full rainbow now. It's a seven. He bets 40K now, and this is kind of an inflection point in the hand, right? Yeah. Like, I could decide to fold right now because this is getting pretty serious, but I am so underrepped. This is one of the best hands I ever show up with. I feel like I am obligated to call. Do you agree? I mean, from that point of view, you absolutely have to call. Yeah. The fact that he's betting pot, the big problem is, of course, it looks like he's setting up a shove on the river. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can fold. This goes back to why we three bet pre-flop in yeah. these spots, right? And, the, and why it's probably better, especially, you know, cut off to button. But I think now that we're here, I think we have to call. Yeah. It sucks and we have to call. You we can, can still beat some value. You can all probably see the sadness creeping over my face because the result is obviously not good. The river yeah. is a nine and he just moves me in. 
And it's for a lot, This right? is a horrible spot. This is really the decision. I've talked to a lot of my knowledgeable poker friends and it's like mixed results as to what I should do here because it's about a pot size bet. My effective stack of about 120K, which is still a playable stack at 5K big blind in a soft field, obviously. Sure. And I feel like I have a huge edge on the field. That's a reason to fold. But if I call, I'm going to probably be the chip leader in the tournament with a huge edge on the field and a good chance to win the tournament. I don't know, man. It's a tough spot. It's a really tough I spot. I ended up calling, and he just turns over ace-jack for top two like it was the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. And then uh, then Jonathan made me $2,200. Yeah. So I, that worked for me. <laughs> it's tough when, like, if you don't know the player at all, you know, if they're bluffing or not, you just have to, you're sort of just closing your eyes and guessing. It yeah. sort of sucks. <laughs> We also got to play at historic Binion's Casino, Jonathan, the site of the old school World Series of Poker in a 10 table room, which meant there were a ton of alternates. This was their main event for the summer. It was a 1K buy-in. And something that we really loved was they were doing button ante, oh, which is a so really, good. just look it up. It's great. You want to do button ante or big button ante as much as you can. The whole wo world is going to be doing it soon. But Jonathan, you had a pretty interesting hand here. I did. So a very active player opens in middle position, and I've got king, queen of spades in the small blind, and I defend. I mean, I, I just call, I guess I'm not really defending, but I call from the small blind. I could three bet it, but it's fine to call, um, I think. Uh, the flop comes out three, six, six with two spades. This is a very good flop for us. I check to the very active player, and he continues, I think for about 1,800, which is a reasonable continuation bet there. I decide to call and not raise, even though I know I raised one the other time I had a flush draw. You can't always raise your flush draws. This one's got a lot of equity too, so I just call. Also, the board is good for me, and me calling, I can represent lots of things later. Um, the turn is a seven of clubs. So that completes four or five, which I'm more likely to have than he is. I check, he checks it back. That's great. I can rep all sorts of strong things, even if I miss, I really like this. Uh, the river is the 10 of clubs. So it's like, uh, okay, I, I mean, I feel like I have to bluff this. So I bet 4,800 repping any pair of any kind, <laughs> basically repping anything. He thinks for a little bit and makes it 10,900. And I'm sitting there and I think, what in the world can you raise me what with, What is he man? even repping? Like pocket tens that check back the turn? That's the only one, right? Quad sixes that C bets and that, like he's gonna bet all of his strong hands on the turn, I have to believe, because he's gotta protect against the flush draw. Maybe he checks back some of his over pairs, maybe, but is he gonna raise those? It's like pocket tens are nothing, and I don't know how often he's checking him back on the turn. So I re-raise. I make it 19,800. I just put three 5K chips in there, and he insta-folds. And that felt really good to do with King High. The other thing I thought was, I think what he, what I, in the moment, I was like, I think he's raising me with Ace High, because he thinks I have a pair, and he feels like he can't call. He can't hero. So he's got to raise instead, and I can just blow him off that. And I did. It looks a lot like you have nines or eights or something there. You're trying to get thin value on the river. Until I re-raise, yeah. and now it looks like I have a straight or a yeah. full house. I mentioned that Jonathan paid for my two bullets in the double stack with his swap, which was good because neither bullet worked out as you might imagine. I'm going to talk about my bust out hand from the second bullet where I actually went reasonably deep. You know, it was after dinner break. It felt pretty good. I felt like I was playing well. I don't know. I think I played this hand fine, but there's mixed opinions on the flop play where I have two black kings and I open in the hijack, excuse me, the low jack, and the small blind calls and the big blind calls, I have 50 blinds at 500 big blinds. So I have about uh, 25K, no, 40 blinds, excuse me, about 20K. And the flop comes 10, six, deuce with two spades. I do have the king of spades in my hand, which feels kind of good. Now, mostly I want to talk about how poorly my opponent played it because I'm still <laughs> tilted about it, but I'll talk about my decisions instead, where check, check, with my kings, I of course see bet I had made it uh, 1,200 pre-flop. I make it 2K on the flop. The small blind, check raises to 5,200. Now I have about 18K effective to start the flop, maybe 19K effective to start the flop. Big blind folds. The question is, what do you do here with kings? Obviously not fold. Of course not. But do you flat and let him continue with his bluffs? Or do you just move it in right there because you have about a pot size bet left? The pot is valuable to you right now if he folds. If he calls, you're okay unless he has a set. 
What do you think, Jonathan? I think mostly I'm going to call here and not re-raise. I'd be worried about blowing off worse hands and getting called by all the better ones. I think some often it depends on your opponent, of course, but often there's a game theory disaster type situation here where he's just going to throw away his top pair type things that are his, even maybe his slight over pairs, like two nines or something like that. Um, because like, oh, you have aces. Kind Slight of like under pair, you mean? Because there's a 10 on the board. Oh, fine. Yeah. Okay, well, he's not going to have jack. But ace-10 or something like that. He actually may fold ace-10, which is a kind of a disaster. But if you know your opponent really well, of course you can move in if you're sure you're getting called. I think this guy's competent enough to mostly have sets and flush draws here. And like, he should have combo draws or nut flush draws mostly when he has the flush draws. Mm -hmm. So against that range, the question is, what's the best method here? Of course, I'm not folding to the turn if he moves in. Right. Like, I'm just hoping he doesn't have one of the sets. There's only nine combos, and he doesn't usually have pocket tens anyway, because he didn't three bet my relatively late position open preflop, and he's been mostly pretty aggressive. I think because we know we're getting it in either way, there's like no card that's going to come on the turn except maybe an ace that's going to even scare us. Um, I think I would call with just the, to give him a chance to make sure he, he gets the rest of the chips in. Well, so tell him what you did. I moved in. Uh, I felt like it was okay because of the opponent. Mm -hmm. He snap called with the naked eight high flush draw, no other draws. I feel like that's just a horrible play, I honestly. Mean, to check raise that and then call it off for that amount specifically is pretty bad. If he's going to do that, then moving in is amazing. Yeah. And so I guess it, by result, I made the right play against that opponent. Now I don't know if overall it's the right play. Yeah. As you can guess, I called it my bust out hand. So it didn't exactly work out, yeah. even though I had the king of spades, which is just, that's bull stuff. Yeah. That's bull stuff. It's not fair. River to spade. And uh, now I'm sitting here instead of playing in a double stack. Final thought on that. I guess you also do have to have some balance. That if you're going to move in with nut flush draws yourself and things like that, yeah. you have to have some over pairs and things like right. that. Right. I don't have enough too. sets to yeah. just have pure value, right? Because it's a right. pretty dry board other than the flush draw. Yeah. So that's another reason to move in, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I played it okay. I think both ways are fine. It's just disappointing to lose. So some of you may be wondering, I mentioned before about the Aria tournament that I played and did well in. Um, I mentioned that we chopped it and how that works and what happened. So here's the deal. Uh, we were at the final table. When there were seven of us left, someone brought up the notion of a chop. And at that point, they, they post on the actual on the board how much if we chopped it evenly, how much it was. It was like $8,000. They, they post it on the board? Yeah, it says, wow. chop, it says like chop them out. It's like the opposite like of the World Series. Yeah, they're trying to encourage people yeah. to end the tournament, basically. So some people were saying, hey, we could all get $8,000. But they're like... It wasn't, like, I had a lot of chips at that point. I wasn't very interested in chopping. There were people with huge amount of chips who had no interest. This is usually the way this goes. So a few people bust. We get down to five-handed. And again, someone brings it up. But one guy's got like 1.9 million. And then the rest of us, like, I have like 600,000 or 700,000. Someone else, you know, no one else has like more than really a million. So that guy has no interest in chopping. Again, it makes perfect sense. Uh, however, the big chip leader got into a pot with one of the smaller stacks and doubled them up as they got it all in pre-flop. And then the chip leader was down to like 1.4 million. I personally at that point had 900,000. I think I was a short stack in the tourney. And the chip leader actually said, are you guys still interested in chopping? And this, at this point it was about $12,000 yeah. each is what we'd gotten. And I said, do you mean even chop? Because <laughs> I wasn't interested in doing anything that was, I, I only want to take something that's worth more than my chip stack, not even equal really, honestly. Yeah. Um, it needs a, to be a good deal. You have for an me. edge in the field. You can't be taking an ICM chop. I believe I do. Yeah. I believe I have an edge on the field. Um, they may disagree, but I believe I do. Um, so I felt like, yeah, it's only if it's worth more than my stack would it be worth doing. But if we do an even chop and I'm probably the short stack at that point, that's good for me. So the chip leader offers it to everyone. Everyone else very quickly accepts and bam, they just pay us out. It takes 45 minutes, by the way, to get paid when you do that. But it's really fun that these people you've been competing with and playing so hard against suddenly are your best friends because everyone just made 12K and we're just hanging out laughing about the stories and the people we knocked out and it's, it's pretty great. I think end of tournament psychology when people start asking for chops is some of the most interesting stuff that's not often shown in televised yeah. poker and there's ways that you can manipulate that to really to your advantage and in this instance you didn't have to. They just right. gave it to you, right? Which right. is pretty sweet and good job. I mean, I actually said to the guys, you're, you sh you're lucky I wasn't the chip leader at that point because I would have definitely made you give me more money. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would have said, I'm, you know, I understand it's 12K, I'm going to need like 16,000 and you guys figure out how you want to pay me. And 
let's see if you, and if they didn't want to do it, we just would have kept playing. Yeah, that's a pretty good strategy in general. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully we have more stories of victory for you next time. Hopefully I get to do some of the victory stuff. That would be pretty fun for me. Anyway, let's go back to some poker, Jonathan. Yeah, we're excited to play. Thanks for watching for sure. We actually have a few people still left in the double stack, a horse we put in. One of our good friends is still in there as well. So hopefully by the time we talk to you next, they'll have done well and we'll have profited. Passive income. All right, we're here at the win. We're gonna play the $400 daily. So let's go on in there and watch out for those $11 pizza slices because it's pricey up it's in here. It's very pricey here. All right, let's go. good luck to us.